Hey YouTube, Eli here from Atani Geeks. I wanted to get on here real quick just to give you a quick update on my Polestar 2 order. Well, long story short, I cancelled it. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. It'd be really great to add some new members to the Atani Geeks family. And also hit the like button on this video and other videos that you watch, the way the YouTube algorithm works. It'll expose more people to my content, which will hopefully in the future give me more ability to put out higher quality content down the line. If you take a look at the video that I posted before this about why I chose a Polestar 2 over a Tesla Model 3, you'll see that there are five main reasons that I decided to go for the Polestar 2 instead of the Tesla. Unfortunately, two of those five reasons fell through. The first one is practicality. If you remember, I spoke about the hatchback and the ability to take the car pretty much anywhere with the range that it had. It was quoted at 275, but the EPA actually ended up testing it and gave it a 233 mile rating. So 275 was already sort of pushing it on the low end, but I figured it was good enough for me to live with. But at 233, you start towing that fine line of, okay, now I really need to start planning my trips out. For day-to-day -day use, it's still great. The EPA coming out to 233 mile rating was a big ding for me, but that wasn't the real killer. So it's story time. My Pulsar 2 was supposed to be delivered towards the end of September or the beginning of October. And I was waiting for a while for the dealership here in San Jose to reach out to me to finalize all the paperwork. But it kept getting delayed. I wasn't getting much information from Polestar. I think the people on the forums weren't getting much information from Polestar. It's actually a little disquieting. So I reached out to Polestar and I kind of asked, hey, you know, where's the car at? When's it going to get here? And the response I got was, the order got delayed until the end of October. That's it. I wasn't told anything else, wasn't given any reason. I was sort of getting a little concerned. I was going to the forums as I posted my woes on Reddit, got some responses there, and I started noticing some interesting things that were happening. First was the availability of materials at the shipment locations where they were supposed to install a tow hitch. I didn't order a tow hitch. There were certain cars that were delayed because they didn't have the tow hitch available to install in the car. Uh, but because I didn't order the tow hitch, I wasn't too concerned, but I was still wondering why my car specifically got delayed until the end of October. So I reached out to the forums and asked if anyone else had heard that their cars got delayed. And at that moment, no one really had heard. But then the YouTube reviews started coming out. People like Bjorn, who has a really well-known YouTube channel, had some issues with charging. I just started noticing little things that were going wrong with the vehicle, like the charge limiter that's supposed to protect the battery from being overcharged wasn't working. Some examples are getting completely bricked and the powertrain wouldn't work and you had to get it towed. So then I started questioning the other reason that I was choosing a Polestar over a Tesla, which was the quality. I started thinking, hmm, is the quality of the Polestar 2 really going to be that much better than that of the Tesla? I still think that the build quality is going to be better. But unfortunately, I don't think that the Polestar 2's overall quality in terms of whether it's going to work and be flawless. I think every automotive startup is going to have growing pains and I was hoping that Polestar having a deep connection to Volvo would give it an advantage over some of the other electric vehicle startups that have those teething problems. But I don't think Polestar does have that yet. They don't have that advantage. And lo and behold, Polestar issued a recall shortly after I canceled my order for every single vehicle that was currently out to customers. So I suspect that they actually held the Polestar 2 deliveries in the US specifically because of this bricking issue or this powertrain issue that they were having. As soon as I kind of got, got wind that you know things maybe weren't working so well, I decided to cancel the order. I decided to, that I didn't want to deal with any teething issues that might come up but I'm still really excited for the brand I'm excited for the products and I'm looking forward to that precept that they're now putting into production that they're gonna call the Polestar 4 I believe and after two models after they come out with their SUV version the Polestar 3 
I suspect that that precept is going to be pretty killer. So maybe in the future I will get that. I did end up getting another car actually. I won't tell you what it is, but I will be posting a video on the car that I got. Just stay tuned for that. I think it will be very interesting. So unfortunately the Pulsar 2 didn't end up working out for me. I do hope Pulsar gets their stuff together and their cars end up being great long term because I am interested in seeing what they'll have to offer down the line. I think there's going to be a maturing of the EVs over the next couple of years when we see the Mustang Mach-E come out, when we see Rivian release their R1T and R1S, and the Hummer EV for example. All these big players are starting to get into the EV game. The Lucid Air will be coming out pretty soon with a cheaper version way down the line. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how the industry evolves, how the EV game evolves over the next couple of years. So stay tuned because I'll be talking about a lot of those examples in the future. And for now, I'm Eli, this is Autonomy Games. Peace.